Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here today for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. Now, the Arkansas State Capitol this week, a rally for school choice. Supporters want to give parents more options about where they can send their kids to school. But those opposed to the change say there's more than meets the eye and that the repercussions aren't being discussed. No child should ever be trapped in a failing school or sentenced to a lifetime in poverty because of the school they are forced to attend. Public education should be the most funded, the most resourced, the most equitable, the most easily accessible providers of education in our country. Now, after yesterday's rally, Governor Sanders also signed an education-related executive order. She says we'll develop a more streamlined system for schools to apply for federal and state funding. All right, before we get to other news of the day, let's get a check of the weather with meteorologist Zach Scott. And Zach, it looks like we're heading into a pretty chilly weekend. That's right, Joe. A chilly weekend. We started out the week much warmer, and then overall we're wrapping up the work week chilly, and the rest of the month looks like it's going to be cool. Not only does it look cool for the rest of the month, no 60s or 70s, mixed in like we've seen, uh, but we're also talking about a couple chances to get some snowflakes to mix in. Two systems that we're going to be watching here over the next seven days. For your Friday, though, it's going to be quiet and overall not too bad. We'll look for temperatures to try to get mostly in the 50s, and we're going to have light winds around, only about 5 to 10 miles per hour, a mix of sun and some scattered mid to higher level clouds filtering out some of that sunshine. Another frosty, chilly night, 20s and 30s going into Saturday, and as we get to Saturday, here we go. We're tracking our next disturbance. This is one of those two storms. This one, though, not a lot of moisture to work with, but it's going to try to squeeze out every drop it can. We should see scattered light showers out in Oklahoma working their way towards the state line. I think by late morning, early afternoon, we could start to see some drizzles, some light sprinkles and showers working their way in. And then as we go through the rest of your Saturday, this should overall be more on the lighter side. We're going to have the chance for some drizzle and some light scattered showers around the area, maybe even by late afternoon, evening. A few snowflakes mixing in, especially in the Boston Mountains, some of the higher elevation areas. A little bit of a break late evening, first part of the overnight, and then we're going to see some more moisture coming in as we go into Sunday morning. Again, the Boston Mountains has the best chance to maybe see a little transition to some light snow there. We'll be watching that. This looks like a minor event. We're not anticipating any impacts currently. Of course, we'll continue to break the system down as we go over the next couple of days. But uh, at most right now, maybe a dusting in the higher elevations of northwest Arkansas and the Boston Mountains, but we still could see some flurries in parts of northwest Arkansas. Yeah, we'll uh, even track maybe the chance of some flurries off towards the south. We'll keep our eyes on that for you. Then that next storm system coming, we're going to have to watch it. Is it going to take the northern track or southern track? Both are still, both scenarios still on the table for us. Northern track is more rain Tuesday, Tuesday night, maybe some snow to the north. A more southerly track, which again is still very possible, next Tuesday, Tuesday night would give more of the area Maybe a big snowstorm. We'll have to watch it. A lot to get excited about the next several days, Joe. All right. Thank you so much, Zach. All right. Now we want to bring you some stories that you might have missed this week just to get you caught up heading into the weekend. First, it's been more than five years since a Cameron High School in LaFleur County was severely damaged by a massive fire. Now this morning, students are back in class. They're in a brand new building. 5 News anchor Darren Bob has the story. This is what it looked like in August of 2017, a massive fire consuming the old high school in Cameron, Oklahoma. Investigators say they believe an electrical problem overnight caused that fire. Today, this is what it looks like, brand new classrooms with everything a modern school must have. We have the latest of smart boards, uh, smart TVs, uh, computers, laptops, Chromebooks, uh, everything's brand new for our students to utilize. Superintendent John Long says not only are the faculty and staff glad to be in a new building. I think the kids are very excited and when I meet them in the hall, they say we love this building. We love what's what's done and, and uh, you know, everybody's so appreciative. Ken Whitehead is the high school principal. We've been separated for roughly five years after the fire and to, uh, to walk in this morning and to see our students all back in the classrooms and engaged in, in the learning process, it just seemed like a big weight was lifted off of their shoulders and everybody was comfortable where they were at. Roy Butler has been a teacher at the high school for years and says good things really do come out of bad situations. As you walk through it, it's the best facility around and it's just 
really wonderful. You don't really realize what you lost five years ago to something like this. Shelby Fitzer is a student at the new high school. I think it's pretty good so far. I think everybody is kind of enjoying it. Still getting used to it, but enjoying it. I think it's way better than the last high school. We have so many more resources than we did in the last one. Long says he's proud of not only the students, but the entire town of Cameron. Our community and our kids deserve this. August the 29th, 2017 was a horrible day for Cameron, the community and the school district of Cameron, and we wanted to build them back the best possible school that money would allow. And I think that they're, the kids are very appreciative of what we've done. And in a state with so many hunters, chronic wasting disease is now a common term for us. It was first diagnosed in Arkansas deer in 2016 and is still found by hunters from time to time. But even those it's common, the name sounds pretty serious. So how much should you worry? Our verified team set out to get the answers. So what is chronic wasting disease and can it infect humans? These are our sources. Chronic wasting disease is what's called a prion disease. It infects animals like deer and elk and leads to neurodegenerative disorders. Symptoms can develop over a year or more and include drastic weight loss, stumbling, and reduced fear of people. Prion diseases are not unique to deer. CJD and mad cow disease are both notable prion diseases that infect humans. All are neurological disorders that are universally fatal. Prion diseases can spread through bodily fluids like feces, saliva, blood, or urine, as well as contaminated surgical instruments and in some cases contaminated meat. Once introduced to an area, chronic wasting disease can spread quickly among deer and elk. So can chronic wasting disease infect people? Luckily, there are no known cases of chronic wasting disease spreading to humans. Studies have shown it can spread to some monkeys, but findings are mixed. Still, the CDC recommends not eating meat from animals with chronic wasting disease. Given that prion diseases are untreatable, it's worth being extra safe. Dr. Ted Rothstein says that if you see a deer that's all skin and bones, uncoordinated, and has little fear of humans, it might be infected. I think that might be a clue to want to have your meat inspected before eating it. So we can verify that no, as of now, there's no evidence that chronic wasting disease can infect humans. Still, it's worth taking precautions just to be safe. And another story you may have missed this week, the Crawford County Sheriff's Office faces another federal civil rights lawsuit involving claims of excessive force by a former deputy. The Sheriff's Office fired Zach King for his involvement in the violent arrest of a man outside of a Mulberry convenience store last summer. He's named in a lawsuit related to that incident and now two others. Five News reporter Catherine Gilker has a closer look at the allegations. Crawford County deputies were called to the home of Polly Reisenhoover in May 2021 to reports of someone who possibly had a gun. According to a lawsuit filed in federal court, deputies asked everyone to come out of the home, and they eventually did. Reisenhoover says she asked former deputy Zach King why they were at her home because she hadn't done anything wrong. At this point, um, I believe Deputy King was getting frustrated with her. Um, she had already been pat down. She had no weapons or contraband on her at this time. And uh, in that frustration, he ended up tackling her to the ground and putting her in handcuffs, even though no charges were ever pressed. Adam Rose is representing Reisenhoover. He says physical force simply wasn't necessary. I believe it was it's another example of this particular officer using force um, and not de-escalating in an unnecessary situation um, where no danger was posed to him or the other, other officers at all, yet force was still the first thing that was resorted to, and it just shouldn't have been in this scenario. There is no video of the incident. Rose says Deputy King kneed Reisenhoover in the back and twisted her arms behind her back, leaving her with multiple injuries. Deputy King alleges Reisenhoover attempted to slap him. And there was no marks on Officer King to substantiate that. Um, and again, even if she had, again, tackling her to the ground, um, when she was a 65-year-old woman who wasn't armed, it just was not the appropriate response. Rose represents another woman who claims King used excessive force during an altercation in June 2022. Well, those are some of the stories you may have mixed this week. And the latest news and weather where you live, I'm Joe Ellison. We'll see you next week right back here.